Welcome along guys, I think we're on episode 8 now of this build series. How did that happen? How can we be on episode 8? Never mind, we've still got some good stuff to cover. In this episode, as I mentioned last time, we're going to be installing the Oberon clutch slave cylinder. Um, this is a, you know, can be a weak point on the bike. There's nothing wrong with mine. Slaves seem to have to hasten to add, but I'm fitting this as a precautionary measure. Um, maybe a bit of a nicer clutch feel as well with one of these. So there's going to be another Chops tip as well as Chops's tip. There's going to be a comparison between the Arrow back box, the Arrow growler, and the Tecmo muffler. I'm going to be weighing both of these bad boys, seeing which one's the lightest, seeing which one wins on quality i have to say i'm not going to, be able to do a sound comparison just yet between these two because the bike's got no wheels on it so i can't push it outside so the sound i might be a little start up in the garage but it won't be a true representation of how the tecmo sounds until we can get the bike outside we've got some wheels but we can check out the differences in quality the differences in looks the differences in weight there's something there it's also very exciting mavis isn't it no. because we're fitting carbon fiber bits we've got some carbon fiber swinging arm covers so this episode is going to be quite exciting it's going to be finishing the bling it's bling time mavis are you excited yeah whoop whoop no okay without further ado chopsy roll the intro So here is the bike, here is the clutch slave here. So this is what we're talking about. We're talking about clutch slaves. We're talking about this little unit here, this little puppy. Standard clutch slave. They've been known to fail on the 619 701s. I know of one person whose slave has failed. A lot of people in the comments always say their slaves have failed. Um, there's nothing wrong with mine. This has been working perfectly, but I'm gonna change it anyway as a precautionary measure. When changing the fluids on your motorcycle, like for instance, when changing the clutch slave fluid, always make sure you use the best oils available for the job. In this case, I'm going to be using the Fuchs Silkaline for the job. They make a variety of oils. This is their universal clutch and brake fluid. Exceptionally good. If you're doing any sort of oil change on your motorcycle, for Fuchs sake, make sure it's Silkaline. The Oberon units are around about £100. Um, they're uprated billet units. You know, I've never heard of any issues with these. So uh, highly recommend, really, as a precautionary measure, swapping your clutch slaves over. So first things first, before you start, while it's on the bike, just loosen a tiny little bit the uh, oil line into the unit. Once it's off the bike, you won't be able to hold it enough to actually turn that. So just, just loosen it a tiny bit and then undo the bolts. Now at this point is where Chopsy's tip comes in. Tip of the week! So for Chopsy's tip this week, when fitting your Oberon master cylinder, these can be quite tricky to bleed if you just bolt this directly on the bike like that. The secret is, which I learned from Oberon themselves, prime your master cylinder, slave cylinder. Pour oil into it until it's full and then fit it to the bike. If you get oil in this to start with, it makes it a million times easier when it comes to the bleeding. So, let's fill her up. Tip of the week. Oh. Look at that, amber nectar. A great way of doing this is to use a syringe. You don't have to use a syringe. You can just pour it gently. Oh. Oh dear. Oh. oh Jesus, this, this, this isn't how to do it. Don't use a syringe, just pour it in, yeah? We're giving up with a syringe. I told you that wouldn't work. It's much easier to do it like this, I've decided. Flick it, tap it, pop it. No, just pump it gradually, look. And the bubbles come out. Just pump it gently, there you go. Add a few drops. I mean, don't actually push it in, just literally a little bit of pressure on it. A little bit more. Bubble, bubbling. A bit more. And keep doing that until basically it stops bubbling. If you've got an assistant to now hold that, it will make things a lot easier. 
If not, just rest it down gently. Oh, what a mess, what a mess. Now we can gently ease this off of the bike. There we go. Old gasket. You'll see a little bit of fluid leak out of here. Let's see, it's like my the rubber is slightly deforming in there, that a little bit. A little wipe, get things clean. Time to remove the standard jobby. We'll be pleased that you loosen this already now. She's out. Put your over one in, one in as quick as possible. I'm gonna give it a little nip for now, not overly tight at this stage. I'm going to use just a little bit, a little bit of grease, a bit of rubber grease around that seal there, just to help it go in so it doesn't catch. Comes with a new gasket and new uh, banjo washers. Don't seem to use any of those, so I'm not going to refit them. Maybe you need them in some applications. Installation complete. Now just got to make it bleed. So now we have to remove the clutch slave cover, top the fluid up and then basically do a do a clutch bleed. The Silkaline clutch fluid actually exceeds the requirements of 4.1 and 5.1 systems as stated in the small print. This can be used in any clutch or brake system where the requirements are 4.1 or 5.1 oils. For fuck's sake, make sure it's Silkaline. As we pre-primed the slave straight away that lever feels fine. As we pushed the slave on, it sort of pushed the air out of the bleed nipple, didn't it? It pushed the fluid out of the bleed nipple. And it seems that it's actually almost bled itself. So this is going to be very easy just to bleed through now. This is where hopefully filling that slave up before we started will make things much easier at this stage. Fingers crossed. So pull the lever in. Close it. Let the lever out. Pump it a few times. It's feeling really, really good. The lever in. Close it again. She's a bit of a squirter, like you, Mavis. I will just top up at the master cylinder again. Pump the lever a couple more times. But feeling really nice at the lever now. I think that will do us. All fitted, well happy with that. Now I've got a delicious feel at the clutch lever. Ooh. So the spreadsheet is out. I've added an entry for the Tecmo can. The Arrow can weighs 2.22 kilos. Let's see what the Tecmo weighs. I am actually expecting the Tecmo to be heavier because it's a twin core system. It's got two outlets, so two sort of steel, ba not baffles, but steel baffling material, you know. So it's got double the baffling inside I guess so be interesting with the noise test to see how noisy it's going to be it has removable baffles which I've taken out two removable baffles that go in the end only quite small baffles so I'm going to be interested to see how it sounds with the baffles in and out they could be the perfect track day uh, winner track day winners let us stick it on almost two and a half kilos exactly for the Tecmo and can. The arrow was 2.22 two, two kilos. The Tecmo is 280 grams heavier than the arrow. That's the official figures. Quality wise, the Tecmo's got it. The quality of the Tecmo is really nice. But the carbon fiber piece around the end is really nice. The baffles, to get the baffles out, you have to actually remove this carbon fiber piece. It's just bolted on. So if you do come off and you end up scratching this, it's not held on by the rivets. You could just unscrew the three bolts, remove that, buy another one, bolt it on. So that's quite a nice touch. Fully welded all around the joints, unlike the arrow. And all this piece is welded on and attached. What I also like is it comes with all the fittings as well. A new gasket, the gasket I was missing. I've got, comes with one of those and a new C-clip to go around and actually attach them. So all the attachments are included. Very nice. The arrow is also nice to be honest. The welding is a bit patchy around the brackets, which I don't like. I wish that wasn't welded all the way around. It, this piece is also separate, so that's another spring attachment here. I guess that may give you a bit more flexibility with mounting if that is loose. Also comes with a removable baffle. 
The end piece is also riveted, so you can't take this off easy. If you come off and scratch this, you'd have to you know, drill the rivets out, re-rivet on a new carbon piece. Overall, I don't think the quality is quite as high as the Tecmo. It's close, but not quite as high. Let's fit this bad boy. So the gasket I mentioned last time, that is this sort of fibre gasket. I don't know what you'd call it, actually. But that slips over here. Then you also get this piece, a new one of these clips to go around. The great thing about the Tecmo system, it comes with the nut fitted on the back, so you haven't got to try and hold the nut on the back. It's welded on already. That's a nice little touch. And then finally, tighten this back up. That's all aligned. Love it. Absolutely solid. You've left the camera on. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Really nice system. Well, happy with that. Thanks, Tecmo. Give it a little wipe down to remove any stains which may have appeared as you've been installing it. Ooh, I do like a carbon tip. Right, it's time for carbon fibre. It's time to fit the carbon accessories. Take off your gear lever, I think, to start with. Make things a little bit easier. How many bolts are needed off? Three bolts have to be removed. One, two, three. It's time to crack out some of the TI fastenings. So what we've got here, caliper bolts, just bits and bobs, I don't know what they're for. Well, I think they're for the yokes and stuff. Disc bolts perhaps, or these could be the, oh. Disc bolts, they're disc bolts. They're sprocket nut bolts. These are clutch, clutch cover side. These are ignition, these are ignition side, these are the ones. So now I've got to decide, do I replace the ones with titanium that I can't see? They're covered. Uh, I guess I should. So I'm not going to change the ones I can't see, I've decided. I'm going to use them for extras, such as changing these up here and stuff like that. Look at this now. This is looking amazing. Oh, absolutely sexy. Mavis, what do you think of that? Super sexy. I completely agree for once. bling a ding a ding dong Now it's time to fit the swinging arm covers. Look at these beauties. Tecmo swinging arm covers, pre-preg carbon fibre, solid carbon fibre. These weigh 100 grams. Give your swinging arm some ultimate protection. Look at that finish. Beautiful. So a couple of ways to fit these. These come with little holes here for zip ties. One there, one there. So you could just zip tie these on and that would be fine. But I want to fix them on so you can't see zip ties. A bit more professional, I guess. And I'm going to silicone these on. So apply silicon to the inside, push them on, and then put the zip ties around just to hold it while your silicon goes off. You, you know, this is all going to be right underneath. So I'm going to give it a good old splatting like that. So tuck the back piece around. There we go. So make sure you round the back here. Nicely around the back of that, over the little lip here. And now, just put your zip ties on to hold it nice and tight until it dries. Just a case of waiting for your silicon to dry now, and then remove the zip ties. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Well, there we go, guys. That's about it for this episode. You may have noticed during this episode some very subtle mentions of silkaline oils. <laughs> the reason for this is I contacted silkaline and asked if they'd like to get involved with the project, if they could supply a bit of oil for me to do an oil change and a few other bits and bobs. They said yes, they'd love to. But not only are they supplying me a bit of oil, they're sending a load of prizes to give away to you guys. So what will happen, probably in the next episode, I'll mention how you can enter this competition. It's probably going to be guess the overall weight loss of the bike once we're complete. I mean, things are almost wrapping up now. I'm awaiting the graphics kit, I'm awaiting the seat cover and the wheels back. And then we can fit all the discs, all of the new chain of sprockets. But it's probably two 
perhaps three episodes left until we're finished. So not that much more to do. So as soon as I've got the products here, I'll show them off, let you know how you can enter the competition. Also, I'm expecting the cylinders back for the Ducati soon so we can start and complete the Hypermotard build as well. I can't, you know, I've had that bike for a year, a year, over a year now. I've ridden it twice in a year. Um, I, it's almost like I don't own that bike anymore. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be like someone giving me a bike because I've been without it. I'm suddenly going to have its bike back that's come out of nowhere. So I'm really looking forward to getting the Hypermotard back together. I've got most of the bits and bobs now just to finish that build off. So as soon as those cylinders are back, I'll crack on with the Hypermotard and probably have these two projects running together. So that will happen soon. Come on, Twan, soon. Get those cylinders back. But as always, thanks very much for watching, guys. Really appreciate all your support. Take care. Stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Obviously, when fitting the slave cylinder, you're going to have to bleed the system. You're going to have to change the oil. I'm a great believer in using the best oil possible. It's very nice, isn't it? Really good. Still clean oils the best oils available. This video is not sponsored in any way by Silkening. Two holes for the price of one.